reading tonight is going to be in the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 14. And I'm going to read a, a few verses of scripture and follow along if you like. The book of Exodus chapter 14, and I'm going to start reading at verse 10. Exodus chapter 14, starting at verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood be be behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud in darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided." Then I would like to refocus your attention to verse 15. Verse 15, and this is going to be my text tonight. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. And I'm preaching with the help of the good Lord tonight on the thought or title of a message, Making a Split Decision. Making a Split Decision. Reverend Palmer, can you please pray, sir? Father, tonight we thank you for the moving of your Holy Spirit that is already here, Lord. Continue, O oh God, to have your way in our hearts and our lives. Continue to move by your Spirit this evening, Lord. We know that you have delivered, O oh God, your people in, in the past. We know that you can deliver us even now, O oh God. Continue, O oh God, to deal with our hearts and touch our lives this evening, Lord. Help Pastor now to minister unto us the bread of eternal life. And we'll give you all the glory and the praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The story of God splitting the Red Sea is truly a unique and great miracle. It is a constant reminder that God is always in control and that he takes very good care of his children. Paul declared in Hebrews, says by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. You see, there is no obstacle that is insurmountable for God because he is the God of creation. Amen. Not all obstacles are necessarily a bad thing because we can benefit from them at certain times. In some instances, an obstacle can make us or break us. You take an obstacle course, for example, it can help with agility, strength, confidence, and endurance. On the other hand, someone could get hurt or not complete it and feel defeated. In this case here in our Bible reading, God used the obstacle of water for his glory as a road for his people. However, it was a grave for the enemy. So it just kind of depends on how you look at things sometimes. I like what one person shared. They were talking about the differences between the optimist and the, the pessimist. And, and I guess the Christian says the, the pessimist, he looks at the glass and, or the cup and says, wow, you know, it's, it's half empty. The optimist will look at the glass and say, wow, it's half full. 
But the Christian will look at that cup or that glass and says, my cup runneth over. There's a huge difference. It just depends on what your perspective is. So tonight I'm talking about making a split decision. We have a very familiar story here, I would say, to, to a lot of people. And it's a miracle or a story, in my opinion, it never gets old. Because it's a sure fact that God is able to deliver his people. It doesn't matter how bad the situation seems. And it may seem like there's no other way to go as here it was uh, uh, with the children of Israel. And of course, this was after the, uh, the last plague that God used on Egypt. And I guess you can say that Pharaoh, he had this epiphany, if you will, and said, oh, wow, I got I to gotta do something. We're going to let these people go. But in actuality, God had hardened his heart. But they was like, why would we let these people go? We can still use them for our, pretty much our own selfish needs our own selfish games. And so they decided to pursue after the children of Israel. And here they were, they were trapped. Literally, they were trapped. It was either go forward where the sea was at or to turn around and, and face the enemy. Now, I read to you quite a bit here, and I'm not going to go back over every single verse, but we can honestly see how that the Israelites were very afraid. They were thinking, my goodness, it was really better for us to just stay where we were at. It was better for us to be in bondage to these people and continue to, to be their slaves than, than to try to fight them off. And quite honestly, they were not capable of fighting within them, of themselves. They were not capable of fighting these Egyptians who were, were warriors and then always in conflict and battle. They, they really were not much of a match except God. And God will always make up the difference. I want to look at the salvation of the Lord. The Bible says in verse 13, Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you, whom ye have seen today. Ye shall see them again, talking about these Egyptians. He says, you will not see them again no more forever. Now, some people, I was reading some stuff yesterday, and it was kind of stirring up stirring up my soul because there's some people that don't believe that Pharaoh actually drowned in this sea. And no matter, I kept reading it and looking at different verses and I'm like, how could you come to that conclusion that Pharaoh was not with his army? To say that he didn't drown uh, in the sea, he did drown. And you can say whatever they want, but anyway, I'm just going to keep on believing what the Bible has to say. God is still able to take care of our enemies. Yeah. And that's not to say we got to pray bad prayers for people. Sometimes, you, you know, people may do things to deliberately get on your nerves. But we still need grace and mercy. In this situation here, I would say that the Egyptians had plenty of time for mercy. But they really just were bent on doing it their own way. And so God was uh, giving his people this assurance and that was that he was going to uh, provide salvation for them. Salvation here, it comes from the Hebrew word Yeshua. And it means welfare, deliverance, victory, or prosperity. So it's no wonder why this name is so synonymous with the name of Jesus. It's synonymous with the name of Joshua. It's synonymous with other names. And, and then what does it mean in a, in a nutshell? It means salvation, Yeshua. In, in other words, we can, know, we can look at it like this, that, that Jesus is going to help us no matter what our situation is. Why? Because he is our Yeshua. He is our salvation. He's going to help me. He's going to give me the victory over the enemy. He's going to deliver me. When a person gets saved, of course, but there's no other way that we can get saved but by Jesus himself. He's the one that provides deliverance for people who decide to repent of their sins. I no longer desire to, to live the life of a sinner. I'm wanting something different in my life. I'm looking for another chance, another opportunity, a better opportunity. What can I do like that Philippian jailer? He declared, what must I do to be saved? Believe on Jesus and you can get saved. Amen. Believe on Yeshua. He told them, fear not and stand still. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to help you. He says, I want you to see the deliverance of the Lord. 
A lot of times we get ahead of ourselves or ahead of God and not wanting God to help us in the situation. God is saying all you have to do, first of all, you don't need to fear, you don't need to fear and worry about things, especially if you have no control over it. And so we get ahead of God. We Perhaps we get a little anxious at times, and we're trying to figure it out on our own. But God is letting us know that you don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. In fact, I want you to just be still and see the deliverance of God. The psalmist declared in Psalm 46, he says, Be still and know that I am God. He says, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is with me, so I'm not going to fear. God is with me, so I'm not going to worry myself over about the same problems over and over every single day. No, I'm going to give it over to my God. I'm going to let God do the fighting for me. He says, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. He didn't say you keep on doing the fighting. He says, I'm going to do the fighting. Yes. It means to do battle, make war, devour, overcome. It means to prevail. God says, I'm going to make war with your enemies. You don't have to worry. This is why it's so good. I'm so thankful to the good Lord that he is a righteous judge. Because how many times we get things wrong about people, and we're going, I would say that many of us are guilty of this, including me. I'm, no one's really excluded. You just get so upset, and perhaps your emotions get the best of you, and perhaps you just want to see God instant judgment on someone's life, and rightfully so in some cases. But God says, hold on. You be still. And I want you to see the deliverance uh, that I have provided for you. I'm going to do the fighting. You don't have to plan it and, and come up with all kinds of strategies on how you're going to get back at people that have done you wrong. God says, no, what you, the way you're doing it is all wrong. Uh, uh, stand still and let me fight for you. God is not a politician. Let's go ahead and put that out. You ever seen some of those campaign ads? Maybe someone is running for a district attorney or maybe someone's running for judge or whatever it is, uh, the county prosecutor, and they may say stuff like that. If no matter, we're going to get some tougher laws, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and you don't have to worry, I'm going to do the fighting for you. Only for them jokers that get elected and they don't do no fighting for you? It's like, man, dude just lied so he could get a vote. God is not a politician. If he says he's going to fight for us, he's really going to fight for us. God is not into lip service. If he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Now, it may not happen right away, but he can still do it, and he will. We just have to be patient and wait on God. David said, the Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. There's that word again, salvation, deliverance prosperity, a, a, a victory. I'm, I'm going to just be still and see God work this out in my life. And that's how you know when, when God works things out, you can't but help give him all the praise. And you're just so thankful in your heart and soul. Uh, he, he declared in Psalm 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He says, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Uh, of whom shall I be afraid? You know, when you get into a tight situation or you're at a dark spot in your life, uh, you can think about these verses of scripture, scripture specifically like this, where he says, the Lord is my light. Yes. I ran into someone the other day, hardly recognized him. He was at the shop at, he had a mask on and I had my mask on. And I knew he, who he was, and I spoke to him. And we were kind of just making small talk, and he was sharing some things and how he was at a dark spot in, or place in his life. And I thought to myself, of course you were, because you're not in the will of God. But you know, I didn't say that. You know, right. I probably should have, but I don't know if it would have done any good. When, if if we ever find our place, our ourselves in a very dark spot, and it's and it's not because we're just a, just a terrible person. A lot of times we just allow the enemy to, to lie to us and to overrun our mind or bombard, 
bombard our mind and, and just corrupt our thoughts and we start thinking crazy. And so we end up in a dark place. Like God is telling you what, you know, like he told the prophet, uh, what are you doing here? Yeah. Talking to Elijah, Elijah was fearful. You know, now God had already blessed them with this wonderful, great victory. The prophets of Baal were destroyed. And, you know, uh, Ahab with his old wicked self and his nasty wife, uh, they didn't care about God or the things of God. But that woman just knew she was going to get back and get some sweet revenge on God's uh, uh, prophet. But it didn't happen. But nonetheless, Elijah was in a dark place. Was he living in sin? What, what, what was his problem? He was just so fearful for whatever reason. Perhaps he forgot about the victory just that quick. But God had to give him this, this, this assurance uh, and ask him this question like, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. I got plans for you. There's other things that we need to get accomplished uh, right now. Now is not the time to be fearful. Now is not the time to get into the mully grubs and feel sorry for yourself. Uh, there are more things to do. It's going to be all right. He says, the Lord is my light. He's my salvation. He's my deliverance. Whom shall I fear? He's the strength of my life. He's everything. He's my He's, and that's what strength refers to, refuge and, and, and just a, a, a rock, something that is strong, something that is, that is, is, is assured. There's, there's nothing that can break this up. The enemy says you're not going to make it. You've been down this road before. Why don't you just quit and finally give up? Instead of going back and forth, one day you want to be a Christian, the next day you don't, just stop being a Christian altogether. Come on now, you know you need to be out there first of all. You trying to, you want to be righteous and you want to be holy, being up in the church house. You need to go and march for an old boy that just died. That may have a good purpose, I suppose, but I'm still going to serve the Lord. Why should I leave uh, 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 from this place where I'm at right now in God? When God is the one that dug me out of sin in the first place. When God is the one that says, okay, I see the problems uh, that you're living in. I'm going to help you. I'm going to pull you out of that muck and miry clay. And I'm going to set you upon a rock. That deliverance, that refuge, that strength, uh, that salvation. That's the God that we serve. A God that never fails. Amen. People fail, but God does not fail. He will never fail. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? He says, Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. It's time to make a decision, a split decision. What are you going to do? This word split decision, it has a few meanings, but I thought this meaning was, was, was pretty good here. It's a term they use in boxing, and it means a decision in a match reflecting a division of opinion among the referee and the judges. So the referee is thinking, no, oh boy, in the red trunks, he, he, he's pretty sorry. He, he's beaten up pretty good. And the ref, or well, the judges are thinking, now wait a minute, oh boy, in the blue trunks, he got some really good hits in. I, I don't understand. So they, they, can't, uh, they can't decide right away, seemingly. They're still trying to go back and forth for who's, who's really the winner. No doubt they have to watch some of the tape and look at some things. Well, this person got so many punches. Yeah, he threw so many punches, but only so many landed. This person threw a whole lot of punches, and, and it seemed like almost everyone landed. And so this split decision can also refer to just in a, in a, in a moment like this. Here you have the children of Israel. They're looking at this Red Sea. Of course, there's so many of them. How are we all going to get across the sea at the same time? It's either we go forward, which I don't think we can, or we might as well just go back to, to being in, in bondage and slavery to these people because that's what their mindset was anyway. We would have been better off if we just stayed in Egypt. There's no graves out here, so what, what, what's going on? We, we actually were brought out here just so that we could die. That was never the case. God says, I'm going to deliver you. I see the enemy and how they kept uh, inflicting all this pain and punishment on you. I'm not going to just stand by and not do anything about it. 
I am going to deliver you this day. Yes. I'm going, but what does it require? It requires trust in Almighty God. He says in verse 16, he says, lift up or lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now, of course, Moses was very familiar with this rod because he told him earlier in, in the book of Exodus chapter 4, dealing with this rod, Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is it? What is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. So he understood when God tells him to stretch forth his rod or do anything with this rod, God is going to work it out. Now, us in our own powers and our own little might or intellect, there's certain things we cannot do. There's always certain things that God can do himself. And it's not that he's limited. We're the ones who place the limitations on him. God says, stretch forth the rod. That's exactly what Moses did. I'm going to stretch forth this rod. Now, could you imagine if, if Moses was kind of stuck going back and forth? Of course, he's outnumbered. The people were saying, we should just go ahead and turn around. This is ridiculous, Moses. We, don't, we, we know, first of all, most of us can't even swim. So then what else are we going to do? And, and I don't think a big boat or anything is going to come by at this time. That's in another book. It's not our time yet. I'm just messing around. It's going to be all right. So what, what do I do? Most of the people are saying, let's go back. I have one person here talking about some. we going forward. It seems like the split decision is, is, is going to be this. Uh, we're not going forward. We need to go backwards. Yeah. Moses, he did exactly what God told him to do. We can never go wrong when we do exactly what God tells us to do. But if God is telling us to go forward and we're deciding to go backwards, then how is our life going to be blessed? That's just straight up disobedience. The Lord is not pleased with our disobedience. Some people want to go backwards because they're still stuck in, in yesterday and in, in the past and still wanting to, still wanting to live for, uh, for the world. But God says, I have a better plan for you. Yes. My plan of salvation is not going to fail. There was no way that this plan was going to fall through. You ever came up with a plan? And maybe you thought it was a pretty good plan. Then only come to find out it didn't work. What did you do? Did you get so discouraged you just decided, oh, I'm not going to go through with this no more? Or did you try to do it again? God is not that way. God says, this plan I have for you, it is going to work. Yeah. I, how, do, how do we know it's going to work? Because he's God. Yes. And God is smarter than every one of us. Yes. He knows what's best for us. Yes. The writer declared in Proverbs, he says, trust in the Lord with a little bit of your heart. No. Oh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yes. He says, and lean not unto thine own understanding. He says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy paths. He says, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It's easy to just get so lifted up in pride and to think that we just know everything. But how can we go any further in life if we just have this attitude, I know everything. I know what's best. I know, uh-oh. I know more than my first sergeant. No, you don't. No, you don't. You ever notice that in the rank structure of school? Some of you civilians may not know. You have that, that E5 in the Army. It's a little sim. It's the same to a degree in, in the Marine Corps. But in the Army, you have that sergeant, who's that E5. Then you have that staff sergeant, who's an E6. Then you have that sergeant first class. Then you have that master sergeant. Then you have that first sergeant. The first sergeant takes the, the diamond and places it inside the same, same uh, rank, uh, but he's just holding a, a position, a company first sergeant. He's the first sergeant. He's not the last sergeant. He's not the maybe sergeant. He's not the okay sergeant. 
He's not the guy they just felt sorry for and just threw him that diamond. No, he had to work for it. Yeah. And you get some people, they, man, they just, they just, they just tracking, they're fast tracking, they're high speed. I mean, they pick up E5, no problem. They're just, just fast tracking. First sergeant, some of y'all first sergeants are probably so young, 35 years old. We're like, man, how long he been in the army? He looked like a baby. Don't worry about that. He's the first sergeant. See, if, if we're ever going to, to, to make it in this life, especially for, for the Lord, we have to trust in him. We cannot lean unto our, to our own understanding. When we lean unto our own understanding, we get ourselves in trouble. There was no time. The children of Israel were leaning on their own understanding. They were not leaning on the understanding of God. They were just leaning on the flesh. Man, it's too hard. We can't make it. This is, this is a huge obstacle. How are we supposed to go around? And through a miracle, through a miracle, Moses answered the, the, the call and he, he was obedient to the Lord. Of course, he thought he was, he didn't think he was qualified or perhaps he was making some excuses, but he still did what God called him to do anyway. And so it was right here. God told him to take this rod and stretch it forth. And the Lord caused this wind to come through that sea, and the sea was standing up like a wall on both sides. And my goodness, the, the, just the, the, the presence of the Lord is just so, so amazing. So this cloud is there, and, and the children of Israel, they're, they're protected all around. It was a light for them, but it was darkness for the enemy. And the enemy, they could never catch up with them seemingly. There was always a, a huge gap there. And then all of a sudden, the enemy started realizing something. When their wheels started coming off their chariots, and I believe, of course, Pharaoh, because he was a leader, he was somewhere in the, in, in the front, leading from the front. I don't care what the, uh, what the haters want to say, that Pharaoh wasn't out there. He, yes, he was. He was out there, and he drowned. The enemy started realizing, whoa, wait a minute. I think their God is fighting for them. Bro, you're too late. You should have never fought against God. Nobody wins fighting against God. Amen. And they start to realize, uh-oh, man, there was no time to change, uh, change out the tire. You got a spare tire on your chariot. There was no time for that. If they would have had a spare, that would have messed up too. And the Lord eventually just caused that water to come right back and drown the whole army. Sometimes we come to, a, we come to that proverbial fork in the road. Which way, are we going to, which way are we going to go? We have to make a split decision. I see what everybody, I see what my family is saying. I see what my friends are saying, but then I see what God is saying. What am I going to do with this decision? Am I going to follow them who are not following God and they're only going to uh, lead me in a path of destruction? Or am I going to follow what the Lord is telling me and my life is going to be blessed? Well, you know you... You may have somebody in your family, they probably want you to marry a certain person. Uh-oh. And you thinking to yourself, I don't want to marry that person. But the family's like, no, this, you need this person. This is, she's a very sweet girl. She's very smart. She's pretty. She got all these good things going for her. And you're thinking, I really don't care for her like that. What are you going to do? Well, like, well, this is what the majority of everyone is saying. You have to make a decision. What am I going to do? Am I going to go forward with the, with the plan of God? Or am I going to turn around and say, just give in to all the peer pressure? Just give in to a bad decision. Just give in no matter how bad the, the decision is. Didn't, didn't take no time to pray about it. Didn't take no time to think about it. Just all I was doing was in the flesh, leaning on the flesh, and just decided to dive just headlong in. God said, I told you that's not going to work. But God, if you, would, if you would just hold on, you'll, you'll see my point. God don't need to see our point. <laughs> we want to put God in, a, in some type of uh, martial arts uh, stronghold. I'd like to see you get out of this one, God. God, you better, you better do this. You better do this. When we should be holding, lifting our hands in the air and saying, God, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. God, you see, you see my life. You see what's ahead of me. You see the problems. You see all the stuff going on around me. And, and God, you, you, you already know. 
I'm just going to lift my hands in surrender and, and, and sweet worship and, and just give it all over to you, God. I see how you're moving in my life. Uh, why would I turn around and go back to the bagley elements of the world when God is saying you need to go forward? You need to go forward. If things were so good back there, why didn't we stay back there? Oh, it's just, no. We get to that place where we have to make a decision. What am I going to do? Am I going to cave in to what everyone else, what the majority is thinking? Or should I just surrender completely over to the Lord? I've been doing it my own way for a long time. It's not working. It's just not working. But if I do it, if, if, if I go forward, then that means I have to change. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all if you're going forward in God. Because it can only get better as you serve the Lord. It doesn't get, it don't get worse. It gets better. If I would say for many people, especially a brand new to the faith, that first year is probably the roughest year when you've really been living for the Lord and you've just been so faithful. And that first year is probably the toughest year. But when year two comes around, you know, you're, it's not that you, you think this thing is just so easy. No, you're, you're, you're getting a, a little better. You're learning the voice of God and you're, you're tender to his will. And, and the year three comes around, you're still learning. There's, there's always going to be battles. There'll be bigger battles to, to face. Uh, the obstacles that you ran across in your early years uh, are helping you to get stronger for the later years. So that we, because after a while, it's easy to get so complacent in God. Well, I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to pray. I don't have to read my Bible. I don't have to be in church. No, if it worked in my early years, then certainly it's going to work now. But I'm going, each year I'm endeavoring to get a little closer, a little stronger in God, going forward, not going backwards. Yeah. I made up my mind a long time ago. I got to live for the Lord. Amen. Church, the world is messed up. Yeah. It really is. All you got to do is just look at the news. I look at some stuff. I, I try not to watch it too long because it's very discouraging. It's very disheartening. Um, but I, I believe, I believe with the Lord, it's, it's going to be all right. I believe that wholeheartedly. I don't know how everything is going to work out. And I'm not saying that the Lord told me that this, that, and the other. But I know with God, it's going to be all right. I know that. And the, the Lord is, he's my salvation. He's my light. So I, I know it's going to be all right. I'm not going to fear I'm not going to worry and wring my hands every single day. Some people worry about the same old problems every single day. We can worry about things every single day, but it's not going to change our situation. It's not going to change until when we give it to the Lord. Yeah. Say, God, you take care of it. God, you take it out of my heart. You take it out of my mind. I don't want to think about it no more, God. I'm tired of going to sleep at night a super late because I'm thinking about the same problems every single day. I can't save everybody. Some people think they can save their family and save their friends. But here's a, a great revelation, church. We cannot save our friends and we cannot save our family. Jesus is the one that saves Amen. friends and family. Amen. Well, you don't understand. I gotta, I'm the one that have to be there and when I'm going to preach to them. You may be able to preach to them. That'll be a blessing. But know this. You're not going to save them. You got to put it in God's hands. Because the more I think about it, the more worry I, I am. And you can, you can worry about something so much to where you can actually have an anxiety attack. You can worry about something so much until you start having ulcers in your stomach. You can worry about something so much to where it prevents you from doing normal activities on a day-to-day -day basis. And that right there is defined as a mental health problem. Oh, but when we pray, 
Oh, when we talk to our Jesus, it doesn't matter. That's the wonderful thing about our God. It doesn't matter how early it is in the morning, we can talk to the Lord. It doesn't matter how late it is at night, we can talk to the Lord. It doesn't matter if the church is shut down, I can still pray and talk to my God. Because even though the church may be shut down at times, heaven is never shut down. Hello. I don't care how many lockdowns are in place, and some stuff is just so ridiculous to me. They didn't come to the instruments. We lock down all this stuff, but then we just give free reign to the people that want to riot. What in the world? You got some people, celebrities, bailing out people who were rioting. What's wrong with you? Did you bump your head this morning? Are you feeling okay? Do you run the temperature right now? Because if old boy get out, he might just throw the brick at you next time. And this, obviously, this is not politics. And the world is messed up. There's a sure way to fix it, and that's with Jesus. Amen. There's a sure way to fix it, but people have to make up their mind. They have to, they're going to have to make this split decision. What do I do? Do I keep living the way I'm living? Or do I accept this change that comes through salvation? He told the people of God, fear not. Stand still. Hold your peace. That God is going to fight for you. Amen. Let God do the fighting for you tonight, church. With heads bowed and eyes closed in reverence to the Lord. Decision time. What will you do? Will you continue to do what you've always done? Or will you allow God to just finally just give you that peace and that sweet victory in your mind? God can do it tonight. No matter what you may be going through. No matter what you may be facing, God can provide the answer to all of your problems. He is still the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Jesus is here to help you tonight. Let's all find a place to pray and spend time with the Savior. Let Jesus talk to you tonight. Let him help you. Let him give you that blessed assurance. God is here to meet the needs.